Story number one. The United States of America has not coarsened. It has not hardened. In fact, if you want to diagnose the problems of the United States of America, it is that we have softened. We need more heroicism. We need more toughness. We need more men like Daniel Penny. Late last week, a story out of New York where a homeless man named Jordan Neely terrorized a subway train car was subdued by former Marine Daniel Penny. Penny put Neely into a chokehold and kept him on the ground of the subway car while several other men sort of helped slightly subdue Neely. Sadly and unfortunately, at the end of this incident, Neely lost his life. Everyone has looked at this story and seen the obvious tragedy. Others have read into this story the modern American race drama. You see, Daniel Penny is white. Jordan Neely is black. What they see there is vigilantism, white supremacy. What they see there is the coarsening of American culture in ignoring the needs of the homeless. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez says that everybody on that train responded not by wondering how this man had lost his home, how this man had lost his mind, but through the selfish lens of safety. Others, like Sonny Hostin of The View, have said, I would have given him money because it's always about Sonny Hostin and her empathy. It's always about how she is the hero of her own personal little movie playing out inside of her head and for the rest of us, unfortunately, on ABC. But the truth of the story is that anyone who has lived in New York City understands what it feels like to ride on that subway with or without children, male or female, and think at any moment this subway car could explode into violence. Jordan Neely had been arrested something like 44 times over the past decade. He had threatened women. He had terrorized the subway. He had a substance abuse problem. Reports are he was using synthetic marijuana. We have all who have lived in New York City, and perhaps those of you who have visited, experienced these moments not just on the subway, but also on New York City streets. A man always almost, always, almost, a man ranting and raving incoherently, yelling at strangers, begging someone to make eye contact. And that eye contact is not for human touch, but the excuse for human violence. This isn't projection. I'm not guessing. I lived this for 15 years in New York City. I could tell you the blocks, Broadway and 79th Street, where there were men that constantly ranted and raved and had everybody within a two-block square walking around on edge, preparing themselves for what seemed like spontaneous but predictable violence. Same thing on the subway. Interestingly, my memory is not very good, so I don't store these moments, but I do remember a moment where somebody started yelling at one of my children. And then when he stepped in between cars, I shut that subway door and wouldn't let him come back in when he tried to enter our subway car. You know what else is interesting about these moments, the moment where I did that? Not that I'm the hero of that story. Nobody wants to be in that moment because all you want is to escape to freedom with those that you love. Is that everybody in the car is actually on the same page, but only few are willing to do or take action. There's no, there's no gray area. There's no misunderstanding. There's nobody on the car going, hey, guys, take it easy. Anybody have a five spot? Let's get him a sandwich. No, because we all know in those moments that's not what's happening. This isn't the moment for self-reflection about the system and how it spit out people into homelessness, which, by the way, is a deeper conversation and one that perhaps we can have here on the Will Kane podcast about the correlation and as we dive deeper, perhaps the causational effect of shutting down mental health hospitals, insane asylums, and the corresponding rise in homelessness, drug addiction, and violence on our streets. The chart's pretty stark. You can look at the two line graphs. That's not an easy diagnosis or potential suggestion or solution because we know there were problems with involuntary commitment, abuse inside mental health hospitals. We know that was no turnkey solution to America's problems. But neither, obviously, is turning out the sick onto our streets to dig through trash cans, calm their brains with drugs, 
and terrorize the rest of the citizenry with their illness. And that's what happens. Look, that's not to malign every person who suffers from mental illness. We can all follow along the logical bouncing ball. But we can also see that most of this stuff is one of two categories, and often both, career, career criminals and the mentally ill. Jordan Neely satisfied both of those criteria. And as he was terrorizing that subway car, once again, America's answer to him couldn't be softness. It wasn't, as AOC pleads for, more empathy. It wasn't some spare change from the pockets of Sonny Hostin. No, what it needed, what America needed, what the people of that train car needed, was a man of action. That's what we all need. When we look around and we see the growing insanity in our world, this who knows what motivation would bring someone to commit the kind of terror we saw in Allen, Texas. I mean, I've seen the photos. I've seen the video. It's nightmare material about him and the destruction he did to families, to children. Who knows what drives someone to that place and in that moment, but I do know that it was cut short by a heroic security guard. I'm surprised it wasn't cut short sooner by a heroic citizen in Texas, constitutionally armed. Or even, and not to put all of the burden on one man or one moment, I don't know who the man is or the woman might be. There was, if you see the video of the moment where the Allen shooter gets out of his car, there was a black pickup truck pulling out of its parking spot. Could it have run him over in that moment? I don't know. But I do know that the answer is not more softening. It's not less masculinity. It's not toxic. We need heroes. We need tough men willing to step up for tough situations. I firmly believe this. We need men like Daniel Penny. Now, this interaction between Daniel Penny and Jordan Neely is not perhaps without fault. Clearly, Neely died. Did Penny hold that chokehold for too long? I don't know. That's for a jury of his peers to understand the facts. What kind of training did he have? How long did he hold it? Did he give relief moments to Neely to allow blood flow and airflow? I don't know. I don't know those facts. I'm not here to tell you that Daniel Penny did everything right, nor to tell you there wasn't a tragedy. Perhaps even when it's all said and done and we know the facts, perhaps even an injustice. But I do know this. There is injustice every time you allow one person to terrorize 30. Be that with a firearm or be that with their volatile, violent presence. And the only way we're going to answer any of it isn't to always hope to outsource our own security. It's not going to be to always hope the police arrive in time. Oh, those are levels of expectations we can maintain that we should have. But you know what else? We have to be able to stand up for ourselves. And to hell with any prosecutor that steps in and says, you don't have that right. To hell with Alvin Bragg in New York going after a bodega clerk owner for defending himself from a violent attack. The right to self-defense is a fundamental right. I am not required to be anyone's victim. And in a civil society, it should be expected that I be someone else's hero. That's how it should work in a society that values the characteristics of manhood. That is not toxic. That is actually heroic. Again, I don't sit here today and argue that every action taken by Daniel Penny was just or correct. We'll let the facts and a court of law help us arrive at those conclusions. But I do know the instinct is absolutely correct. And I'll guarantee you that every person on that subway car appreciated what Daniel Penny did that day. He wasn't looking to hurt in my estimation, he wasn't looking to hurt, certainly not looking to kill, how dare AOC call it murder, but rather to subdue what was a volatile and violent threat. And because of that, because of that instinct, we need more Daniel Pennies. Hey, it's Will Kane. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News channel on YouTube. It's the best way to get our latest interviews and highlights. And click to subscribe to the Will Cain podcast for full episodes right now.